chuckles working in the normal way. So, um, yes, I was going to say, if you want to sit down, do just for a moment, because you know, we're going to do some standing after the other person, I don't want to get So, if you all sit on one side, that's easy for you, because there's directly another group coming in. I don't know how much you know about the way the university actually works, because I think before you see Oxford, it's quite important to know a little bit about that. Um, the fact that there's one University of Oxford, uh, it's just as there is the University of Cambridge, uh, one University of Oxford, and within the university, 38 colleges, and every student belongs to a college, as well as the university. And everyone says their own college is the best. Whichever one it is, it's always the best. <laughs> so Exeter, for the people who are here, is you know, the best college of all. And so is Christ Church, so is St John's, and so on. And um, they're all mixed. And I see we, we have a lot of women in our group, and you're the minority. So, <laughs> so, um, the, colleges, the colleges began to go mixed in the, um, in the 1970s and 74 the college has got permission to be mixed, but from 1879 to 1974 there were five colleges for women and the rest were all for men. So there are 38 colleges now all together and they are all mixed since 2008, the last women's college went mixed. The first college for men was 1249 and that's University College, which is where Bill Clinton studied, it's where Shelley the Poet studied, it's where Stephen Hawking studied before he went to Cambridge. And um, that was fun, but the idea of a college really was to, to keep students in and boys from the town out, because there used to be a lot of fights. And the idea of the college was to be like a monastery on the inside. So they would have rooms for sleeping, and dining hall for eating. So this is really a dining hall here, it's really like the refectory of a monastery. A chapel for praying, because everybody would have been Catholic time and they were all going to become priests and monks and um, rooms for sleeping. So they had for, for praying, for eating, library for working and rooms for sleeping. And the modern college has a bar. The most modern colleges don't have a chapel because nowadays people are of every religion under the sun. So um, that changed in the late 19th, late 19th century. The rules about being a member of the Church of England, that all changed at the end of the 19th century. So what you have are 38 colleges, and 30 of them take undergraduates and postgraduates, and then the other eight just take postgraduates. So this is a mixed one, undergrad and postgrad. Probably, as I say, I annoyingly don't have my figures with me, but probably about 400, around 400 undergraduates here, and 150, 160 postgraduates, and that's quite a typical mix. And they come from all over the world, the postgrads, about 70% come from overseas. The undergraduates starting at the age of 18 and so on, it's a long way to come if you were coming from, you know, Indonesia or somewhere um, to study at the age of 18. It's a long way to come away from home. So um, mo about 13%, 13 13, 13, 17% maybe of the undergraduates are non-British, but all the rest are. So it sort of turns it almost round the other way from the first place. Um. And if you're in a college like this one, you're following a university program of study. So no matter which college you're at, if you're doing English, language and literature, which is one of the big subjects in Oxford, or you're doing music, or theology, or history, or chemistry, you're following a university program. And your study is going to be exactly the same as all the others of the other colleges. And you do final, final exams and university exams, you have to wear a uniform. The students voted a couple of years ago, well, probably about three or four years ago, now to keep the uniform. So they have to wear a white shirt, a white bow tie for men, black tie for women. You have your water board in your hand, you have to wear a three or your degree, and, and you wear a gown. <coughs> the undergraduate gown is short, it's down to about here, it's sleeveless, and if you've got a scholarship from the college because you've worked well, you have a big gown, longer down to about mid calf. Um, sleeves that hang down, big shoulders, and that shows that you've worked well. I think you're intelligent and have worked well, or maybe you've worked well and aren't so intelligent, but you get a little bit of you get a little bit of money, a lot of honour, and a big gown, and people think, oh, there's a scholar, a scholar. Um, are you here on the Saturday? 
I'm not quite sure whether this Saturday is a degree or not. They have a certain number of graduation days for the year, and they have a lot of summer. So you might see people in guns and things um, receiving their degrees on um, milling around the town when they're here in college. You might see that on, on Saturday. So the thing, the special thing about Oxford and Cambridge is that a lot of the teaching is actually one to one, or you have a private tutorial, more and more now it's a tutor, two students rather than having one to one. But in your college, you have a tutor who's responsible for about eight or nine students, and he or she decides who's going to teach you, and you get sent to experts in other colleges. And, um, <clears throat> and you go about three, around three times every two weeks, and you discuss um, an essay that you've written, or if you do science, you've got problems to solve. So you have the private tutorial, and if you don't like a tutor, you feel there's a barrier between you and the tutor, you can ask to change. So you go to experts in other colleges, and you don't have one college for mathematics and another one for chemistry. In this college, there are students in lots of different subjects. And then, as well as the tutorials, you have the lectures. So all around Oxford, you have um, you know, the Department of Faculty of English, Faculty of History, Faculty of Philosophy. PPE is Philosophy, Politics and Economics. It's a big subject in Oxford. So there you have lots of students from different colleges listening to a tutor from any of the colleges talking about our speciality or our speciality. So you have the tutorial system and the lecture system. But the fact that you're seeing the tutor so often, so personally, they can see if you're working well, is something going wrong, are you a bit depressed? You know, are you spending too much money? Are you having too good a time? You're playing lots of sport, you're mm -hmm. acting in plays. So they can, um, they can, uh, as it were, the college looks after you. So instead of being just one student in a university of 24,000 people, you belong to a college where you're more looked after in the college. I mean, you belong to the university as well. You're a member of both. You have to become a member of the university when you've been chosen by a college. It's just a ceremony in October and we'll see when they have that. But that's, that's really the way the university operates. I sometimes think it's a bit like the United States or any federal system. If you think of the colleges like individual states, the rules for life in college, can you walk on the grass of the quadrangle? No. Can you throw a frisbee in the garden? Maybe. Um, can they put up the graffiti? You know the graffiti for rowing races, it's in the quadrangle there. Some colleges say no, other colleges say that's fine. So that's an example so that would be like state law in the States. And the university rules and regulations are for everybody. And they, if the university says you can't study journalism in Oxford, or you can't do dramatic arts in Oxford, can't do nursing, can't do veterinary medicine or dentistry, then you can't have a college offering that subject. Mm -hmm. And the university says you must wear a uniform, the university fix the dates and terms, it arranges the lectures, it runs the laboratories, the colleges don't have their own labs for science, the laboratories, they, they, uh, they're all run by the university. And so anything that the university decides effectively is like federal law. Mm -hmm. So that's the nearest that I can go that I can get to explain. And it's the academics from the different colleges who govern the university. And they meet in the Hall of Ceremonies, the Sheldonian Theatre. Um, any questions sort of based on that? Um, I hope you're going to think of questions to ask. Um, <laughs> so, could you have one good. question. Where are most of the classes held? Well, the, there are the lectures which lectures. are held in the faculties or departments. Um, in their room itself? In, in, in large rooms in the department. I mean, we're not really going to pass any faculties. There's one that used to be the, is the Indian Institute, and it was the Faculty of History until recently. But most of them are a little bit out of the centre. If you've been to the Ashmolean Museum, you probably haven't had time, but if you've been to the Ashmolean um, Art Museum, um, if you look at the front of the building, the right-hand wing, as you're facing it, like that, the wing on the right-hand side is the Faculty of Modern Languages. So mm -hmm. students who are doing French and German and Italian mm -hmm. go there to have lectures. But the tutorials are given in the tutor's study. So all around the college you have rooms where the tutors give their tutorials. So you have a couple of sofas. You could even have a class. I mean, you could have a class because they have a couple of sofas, a few armchairs. So you could have a class as well as a private tutorial, but generally you have the teacher <coughs> sitting comfortably in some chair and the students um, sitting slightly less comfortably. <laughs>
talking about what they're defending their ideas and so on, um, in the tutor study. Okay. So the tutors in a college will, they don't all, all have their tutorial rooms, their studies in the college. They might have them if they live close to the centre. They might have them in their own house or flat. That's possible as well. And as I say, if you don't like a tutor, you can ask to change. So that gives you an idea. Now this chapel, just to talk about the chapel for a moment, this is the third chapel they've had in the college. The college was founded in 1314 by the Bishop of Exeter in the southwest of England, Devon. And um, they've had, this is the third chapel, it's 19th century. And typical layout to sit facing one another. Mm -hmm. um, the public wasn't admitted before. They can come now, but they weren't. So we haven't got the nave that you normally have in a church. So this was for singing. The people who sat on that side would sing and the ones on this side would respond. It's really like the choir of a church. Mm -hmm. And the head of the college always sits there. The head of this college is called the rector. And the seat on the left, as you're looking at it there as we come in, that's where the rector sits. He comes it up and says, it says reserved for the rector in very little letters, but it does say it at least, or bigger letters there, reserved. Mm -hmm. So... That's um, reserved for the rector, and the, um, the, de the dean in charge of discipline. In Christ Church, the dean is the head of the college, but in, in American universities, the dean is normally the head, but in England, um, the dean is in charge of discipline and is not the head of the college. So the um, rector sits there, the dean sits here, and they used to be able to keep an eye on what the young boys were doing. <laughs> and if you think that when the college began, you started at university at about the age of 12, and by the age of 19, um, seven years of study, like an apprenticeship, seven years of study, you were already a master or tutor. And so what you had were a lot of boys, teenagers, young men, behaving badly, and they could watch from here and see what they were doing. They could see them, and instead of seeing their backs, they could see sideways of what they were doing. Stop that for me. I can see what you're doing down there. Mm -hmm. So that's why this is like a new college. New college was founded in 1379. And the rules of the college, translated from Latin, actually say no games of ball in chapel. No ball games. No ball games, so no football. No jumping and no horrid shouting. So we know that the boys didn't behave very well. Um, you know, they played pushing and shoving. Anyway, people are from every, um, are from about 140 different countries, so every religion under the sun, so people only come now if they want to. Um, the colleges have a chaplain, quite often a woman, and the chapel is still an important part of the college for the services, <coughs> and the college decides how often they want a service, and then for concerts, and this is led to, there are concerts taking place here um, on certain evenings each week from a company that is renting mm -hmm. the chapel. It's all money for the college, because the colleges don't get any money from the government, apart from for teaching the students, and for these buildings they have to find their own money. So, um, the chapel is used. Sometimes it's closed for a wedding, um, a lot of concerts. During term, quite often, I'm, I'm just too close, but behind there is the organ and they have, mm -hmm. you know, a student who, a music student who says, well, I'll be giving a recital free for people to come in. I'll do it at lunchtime for 20 minutes. You could just come in and have a little break with your sandwich. And <laughs> yeah, Not at the moment, because it's out of term. There are three terms of eight weeks, and each um, uh, is eight weeks each. And they, this is now something like the fifth, in fact, if not already, the sixth week of the summer vacation. Where, and they, had the, they, they finished in the middle of June, and they will come back in the middle of October. So there are three terms of eight weeks. And um, most students, um, as I say, are British, but of the undergraduates. But if you take the whole of the university, I think you would find that it's the United States has about 1,500 students at Oxford. And then China, any of you from China? China's in second place with over 1,000. And then it's Germany. No Germans in this group, no. <laughs> um, Germany, and then um, I think India is in fourth place. India is in fourth place. And people like um, India again. Here are three from India, four from India, but in this group we are three. Right. Well, One, two, Indira, three. Indira Gandhi was at Oxford. One of the first women to study at Oxford from India was a woman called Cornelia Sorabchi. 
Okay. Um, and her, her brother was studying at Balliol College across on the other side of Broad Street. And he got permission somehow for his daughter to come to uh, his, well, his, his sister to be the first woman to study law. And I think when she went back to mm. India, she was quite important for women's rights and children's rights mm. and things. She's quite, um, quite the mother of Soli Surabji. And then you have people like Benazir Bhutto from Pakistan, was at Oxford, and um, Aung San Suu Kyi. So it's Carla. Sorry? Bhutto was a Rhodes Scholar. Uh, yes, yeah, she was a Rhodes Scholar. Yes, yeah, she was a Rhodes Scholar, as far as I know. Um, the little girl, um, Malala Yousafzai, mm -hmm. who was... Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. she, she's had one year at Oxford in a college that used to be a women's college. Of course, um, Indira Gandhi was at Somerville, same college oh, as, as Margaret Thatcher. But that gives you a little idea. Anyway, it's a lot of information all at once. So I think what we'll do, we'll go out and... Um, do a tour of Oxford in the heat. <laughs> and, uh, this is so unusual.